Okay, and remember we're powering to speed. We're thinking about it that way anyway. Powering to speed, pitching to the VSI. Because that's going to give us the most immediate response. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators and welcome back to the Finer Points. So many of you know that I'm filming the instrument portion for our Ground School app, which if you've seen it is divided into a written side and a flight side. Um, you can get a free three day trial if you have never seen it. Um, but when you add the instrument content here, what you're seeing in this video is the flight side. So I'm teaching you sort of how I fly instrument approaches. And a lot of this content is going to Patreon. Um, just because I can't wait to release it in the app. Um, and that's the sample what I'm showing you here today. And what, what I want you to pay attention to is it's an actual IFR day, meaning it's cloudy at Half Moon Bay. I don't yet have a clearance. And so I kind of get this clearance dropped on me last minute by air traffic control by design. That's what we're teaching here in this lesson. Um, but mostly I want you to notice that I am flying known power settings to fly known speeds, that I'm trying to stay in front of the airplane using the five T's, and that I'm pulling the big picture together using the five A's. And I'll elaborate on that a little bit more in just a moment, but let's dive right in uh, and sort of follow along. If you want to pull this approach plate up, we are flying the GPS runway 30 approach into Half Moon Bay. That's Hotel Alpha Foxtrot. Number 1A Foxtrot, to reset your transponder squawk 4672. 4672 Foxtrot. All right, you guys, we have actual clouds today in Half Moon Bay. There's real weather there. So even though we started our flight VFR, uh, we can't do VFR practice approaches and, and fly through the clouds. So we need to get an actual IFR clearance to go ahead and, quote, practice these approaches. But I'm always careful of the language Number I use. 1A Foxtrot, uh, report reaching 4,000 feet. Okay, yeah, 5218 Foxtrot, we're stopping just shy of four because we're still VFR. I, I, I know I cleared you up to 4,000 over 1A Fox Trot. Climb the VFR, 4,000 feet, please. I can't clear you until you're at 4,000. Okay, sir, we're showing 4,000 now. 5,200 Fox Trot. We're 5,2,1A Fox Trot. Thank you. Cleared to the half of the airport via radar vectors. Turn right. Heading 250. Proceed direct to jump to cross jump at 4,000. Cleared R now. Runway 30. Approach half Bay. Okay, cleared to the Half Moon Airport via radar vectors. Uh, turn right, direct jump across jump to at 4,000. Cleared to the R nav 30. Approach half Bay. All right, you guys, that came at us really fast. So we have to get the approach into uh, into the GPS. The first thing I'm going to do when things come at me that fast is slow the airplane down. So you're going to see me power straight back to approach level so that I can get down to 90 knots. And then I'm going to come in here on the GPS. I'm going to uh, go ahead and hit the procedure key. Procedure, there it is. And we want to load an approach. On the go, did you want to go all the way out to do the missed approach or just uh, get vectors as soon as you uh, in radar, radar coverage? Uh, vectors and radar coverage is fine, but 218 Foxtrot. Okay, we've got an approach into Half Moon Bay. We are doing the GPS runway 30 approach. Uh, we are going to transition. We had vectors, but we're going to do it from SAPID so that we can actually go direct to Jumda. Um, we're going to hold 4,000 yeah, feet here. Is and we need to get positive course guidance as soon as possible. So load and activate. There we go. Now we're going to go to direct to Jumda. Direct. And deactivate. Okay, there we are. Pretty much a jump to boy. That all happened fast. Okay, so I got a little slow there. All that stuff came at us really fast. So the first thing we want to do when things are coming at us fast is get in front of the airplane with the five T's. So when we get to Jumda, let's make sure that we know exactly what's supposed to happen. All right. When we get to Jumda, right turn to three zero two down to three thousand three hundred, and we are pretty much at Jumda. So we're going to go right to three zero two. We're going to start a descent. And uh, we know the power settings, thanks to our configurations. We're going to start a descent down to 3,300. Turn time United twist, the GPS auto twists. Turn time twist throttle and talk. Okay, so we're going down. Let's just run a quick checklist. 305, 305, pressure, temperature, vacuum, amps are all looking good. Uh, lights, we'll go ahead and turn that taxi light back on. Mixture should be leaned a little bit for this altitude. All right, and we'll run a quick... Checklist for descent, fuel, power, mixture, systems. All right, checklist is complete. Next thing we want to do is get in front of the airplane again because we have another event in front of us. 
So when we get to Woolley, there is no turn, there is no time, there is no twist. Um, Number 1A Foxtrot, no traffic observed between you and the airport. Change your advisory frequency approved. Return to this frequency on the go. Okay, go on to the advisory, then back to you on the go. 521A Foxtrot. All right, so this is an example of what it feels like to play catch up, you guys. 122.8. 8, there we go. We're going to go ahead and put that in the transfer. We'll wait just one moment to call them. It's actually IFR today, so I don't expect VFR traffic in the pattern. And I really need to catch up here. All right, you guys. So what you're going to see me do here is the system that I'm talking about. I'm going to speak in front of the airplane using five Ts. That is turn, time, twist, throttle, or talk. And I'm sort of shaking the tree like, is there anything I'm missing with those five Ts? Once I know what I'm doing at the next event, I'm officially mentally in front of the airplane. I'll plug in the big picture using the five A's. ATIS or ASOS, altimeter, approach briefing, avionics, and airplane. Check it out. So we just want to make sure we're ahead for Woolly. There is no turn. There is no time. There is no twist. There is a throttle down to 2,200, 2,020 rather, and there is no talk. That is our final approach fix, Woolly. So let's make sure we got through our A's. Uh, the ASOS, 12727. Let's make sure we've got that. Half Moon Bay Airport, automated weather observation, 1558 five, Zulu. Wind, calm, visibility, two and one half. Mist, sky condition, overcast at 300. Temperature, one three Celsius. Dew point, one three Celsius. Altimeter, two, niner, niner, niner inches of mercury. Remarks. Use caution for aerobatic activity west and southwest of the airport over the water between 1,500 and 6,000 feet. Noise abatement procedures and marine sanctuary overflight restrictions are in effect. All right, you guys, we got the weather. That's ATIS altimeter. We went ahead and put it right in there because we're cleared for the approach already. Um, ATIS altimeter approach briefing. We're kind of a little behind to do a totally formal approach brief here. Uh, so we'll hold that thought. Um, avionics are looking good and airplane here's the final approach fix so we're gonna just go ahead and do all of the gums things now so we're about to go in the soup we don't want to forget the wheels going down or the mixture going rich or any of that stuff so just the last a is the gump stuff we're gonna do that before we get to the final approach fix right here um, and here we are at the final approach fix uh, we're hand flying this approach so um, we're ready to descend and we have a LPV indication uh, so we know that we're getting the linear scaling on our CDI. Here comes our glide path. So we are going to remember all that practice we did on the 500 foot per minute, 90 knot, in, uh, like the 90 knot, 500 foot per minute descent. Well, here it is. Okay, so that should hold our glide path. Remember that you, uh, this is one of your configurations. So you should kind of know where you're going anyway. And that is 1800 RPM for us. And then I'm just bracketing that course needle. Saying to myself, well, 310, this heading of, of 310, let's make sure our compass is looking good. Turn coordinator, actually, it's 305, so there we go. That's why. So I'll go right to 310, and I'm just trying to notice the trend on the needles, right? I'm controlling the airplane in a positive way, noting the effect that has on the needles over here. If they are trending back towards center, then I am doing okay. All right, now let's get ahead of the airplane yet again. The next uh, point is, uh, I don't even know how to say it, Mavka. <laughs> All right, at Mavka, we can go down below 2020. All right, but we're on our glide path, so, you know, we're just going to follow that and uh, verify that we're at those altitudes as we pass them. All right, since we didn't get to formally brief this approach, it was a bit of a slam dunk. Let's just make sure we understand what's happening with the mist approach. We are going to climb straight ahead to 4,000 feet. There is course guidance to a waypoint called Lakey, but... Uh, Sounds like air traffic control, once they get contact with us on the climb out there, is going to vector us back around to take another swing at this approach. Remember, we are practicing approaches, but what I was going to say to you guys back there was I don't use the word practice when it's actual IFR, because practice approaches in the world of AT typically means you're flying VFR, right? You're doing VFR practice approaches. You're doing it in a simulated IFR environment. Um, today, we're not simulated, although we are practicing, right? I like to, you know, I say multiple approaches. So if, if it's actual IFR and we need to talk to air traffic control, I'll tell them we need an IFR clearance and we'd like multiple approaches. All right, let's turn right to 305 and see what that does to our lateral needle, which we keep losing a little bit. We keep getting a little bit southwest, of course, here. All right, so remember, we're holding headings. 
noting what happens on these needles. If that if that vertical needle is trending back towards center, then my heading is good. If my glide path is being held, then my uh, my 90 knot, 500 foot per minute descent is uh, also coming along well. There, the needle's trending back towards center. Now we bracket, so I'm gonna go left a little bit. Let's call it 302. I hope my parallax, I hope I'm calling those out right. I have a little bit of parallax from your perspective. All right, there we go. All right, the minimums for this approach are 381 feet. At 381 feet, we're gonna look up a little bit before that, but if we do not see the runway, it's full power climb straight ahead to 4,000. All right, so it's how low is 381, how long, that is how long are we gonna do this until we get the heck out of there is also 381, and which way is straight ahead to 4,000 feet. All right, now when we get below 1,000 feet, as always on these instrument approaches, we are going to call out the altitudes every 100 feet so that we have some redundancy, right? So that your ears can hear a little bit, uh, maybe cross-check you and catch you in a mistake. It's hard to find redundancy in a single pilot world. So if your ears can cross-check your mouth, let's go for it. All right, and the needle's getting a little more sensitive there, you see, so I'm gonna go back to three, I think 304, there's just no wind. So I think if I can nail 304, that's gonna hold it. All right, uh, pedo heat is on. That's a mistake, by the way. That should have been on this entire approach, even though we're just about to go into the clouds here at the end. Um, you remember my rule, pedo heat is on all the time when I'm flying IFR. Even if I'm simulating IFR in a visual environment, the pedo heat will still be on. All right, losing, I'm chasing this needle a little bit. I'd like to stop that. So I'm gonna hold this heading right here. We'll see what happens. I'm doing pretty good with my vertical needle. A little fast, maybe. Okay, and remember, we're powering to speed. We're thinking about it that way, anyway. Powering to speed, pitching to the VSI. Because that's going to give us the most immediate response. Right, I can just pitch right up a little bit, and boom, I see, that, final I see that reflected zero. instantly in my VSI. All right. Still getting a little bit right, of course. There it is, okay. We are 900, descending 381. 800, descending 381. 700, descending 381. 500. 600, descending 381. 500, descending 381. 400, and there is the runway, my friends. That was perfect. All right, but look, we're gonna go on missed approach here because we're practicing, uh, but we could land. This is where I'd go power to idle and start to put my flaps in. There's plenty of runway down there to make all that work. So in any case, um, I forgot to make calls to the traffic people here. That's a bummer. Afton Bay traffic, Skyhawk 5218 Foxtrot is uh, on the missed approach. RNAV runway 30 approach. Uh, half moon bay. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Uh, if you want to see more bonus content like this, please go to patreon.com slash learn TFP. Huge thanks to the patrons. That support is critical in getting all this great flight training out to the internet week over week. Also, if you haven't seen our ground school app, there is a free three-day trial. Big thanks to the sponsors. Remember that ForeFlight is the essential app for aviation online at foreflight.com and that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select pilot protection services. Please leave me a comment below if there's a video you would like to see. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little alert bell so that you might get notified of uploads. You guys are the best fans on the internet. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.